So, <clears throat> need a little more front work. The final lowering at the nut and the final nut work. This bridge is low. It should be 0.38. It's 0.31. Uh, we got to raise it up. The saddle is at a really good height, but since the bridge is low, it doesn't have enough to really retain it. So, we're going to have to work on the bridge. We're going to raise this area up, and when this goes up, this has to come up because of what's known as the brake angle. The brake angle being this severe is trying to also push this forward while there's very little edge here to keep it. So, um, if the bridge looked like it was going to come off, I put a pyramid on there, but uh, it looks really well stuck, and I don't want to mess with it. And I can, I can turn it into a pyramid bridge with my the elves. The elves come in and leave them some uh, Corona corn chips and uh, they will make it so, including the little pyramids if, if I want. I might take a little more Corona. Anyway, um, I've got to detail this thing I glued under here. Um, let's look at this tin is. Zoom in. Zoom is a little bit here. Zoom in. Um, these things are being really hard to tune because the holes in here are larger than the posts or barrels. In this case, they're posts. So this thing is being. Uh, pulled this way, so it pivots this sector gear into the worm. Uh, worm and sector is how you used to steal your steer your old car. You have to put a lip here and uh, work this in aesthetically to raise the saddle or the bridge height up to its required three eighths of an inch. Or, uh, a little low right now, but we're gonna. If I raise this up, well, I've got to raise this up, or the brake angle's pulling down too hard and doesn't help anything. The last view of the bridge in its current state. It's, it's funky. It's funky like a monkey. So we've. Glued a piece in here already. It's rosewood matches. It's gonna be the ramp up. I had a bridge, uh, and this was the thin the thickness of it when it came off. It's less than an eighth of an inch thick. I mean, somebody had shaved it and shaved it and cut the grooves in for the strings. And I saw the piece off of it because. <coughs> When I set the thing up, and this was in here, I used a, uh, a piece of popsicle stick to shim this up forward and take up the extra space. Now it's going to get rosewood, and there'll be a cap over this entire thing. So, and this gets built up with. So anyway, you'll see. Piece number two, shim. So, okay, we're blurried. We're blurried. Let's put some. Right here is a. Well, yeah. I put the whole strip in. It's the same height, same length. And. The. Saddle. Going a certain way, you know. The G is forward, and the B is back. So we're 
in there like ragu. It's nice on the bottom. I've actually put a piece in the bottom before I put that piece in because it was resting on the wood there and uh, we've leveled it with a new little piece. Bedded it, as they say. to this like I, it's gonna raise it up uh, I'll do this before. where's my saddle is a good height, but the bridge itself is low, and we bring it up that 60 to 80 thousandths maybe. Uh, 90 is a little excessive. 60 would put us where we need to be. 80 would put us where we need to be. Cause we're... Anyway, <clears throat> that's the next move. Is, uh, at least this front edge will raise up. I'm thinking we'll put a cap over the whole thing and raise it up. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. This was a piece of rosewood that I had cut from a large block. It was saw cut on every side and I'm flattening it. Turn this down. This is uh, the result. You'll see uh, this is the darker rosewood that I added. Um, these pieces match this color, but they're not from here, but they were handy. Um, I like the contrast. Um, it's doing everything I want. I'll do a a finish sanding and shaping and uh, then we'll use some secret sauce on it with no stain to reveal this contrast I think it's going to be attractive ah, there we go it's a nice deep slot it's deep enough for a under saddle pickup should one want to be installed you can see the dark of the, uh, that's, uh, I guess you'd say it's real rosewood, I don't know, but, uh, you can see the difference right there. There's no stain on it. Oh, there's seven pieces of wood here. And I've hit the bad areas of this with 400. Uh, there's the four. There's another piece of it. There's the four. Mm, anyway, I'm, uh, there's drips and runs and blobs and there's also the cracks. The cracks week ago you're settling in the blue is getting super dry and everything is getting used to everything else and uh, there's raw wood that needs finish It's 
very thin, almost watery. A lot of linseed oil and some designer grade gum turpentine. Some certain South American This is fun. This is the fun part. Uh, you probably can't see the finish shining here, but that's okay. We're doing this too. But it's going back together. Still got some fret work. These areas that are exposed wood, I will hit once or twice a day with a swipe. And over a couple of days, it may enough. This is a candidate for uh, enhanced finish. But we'll deal with all that later. There's also no stain on this. This is rosewood too. It's decent wood. I think it's from an imported narrow neck electric. Word. I'll also dress this maybe with a razor blade. The single razor blade. I can't see. Here we go. That's better. I use the reflected light to look at a surface. That's how you do. Lapidary. There's one teeny flaw I don't care about. It. This thing was riddled with some bad body work on my part before I had to painted it and revealed the inadequacies and fixed them. That's how you do it. thing and we'll be back. Yeah. Here's a I've just like this. The strings are loosened, but they're on. I've been playing it. Old paint, new paint. And back down here. Anyway, we've got this to where there's no masking line hump.
and we have lots of other little things to do. Zoom in a little. Yeah. I'm working on this guitar. Yeah. You make it shiny. Mm -hmm. It smells good too. Yeah, it does. And please the oil. It's really just revealing areas. 